Just last year, ARPG world was a very different place. I mean, not really, but we have to make this dramatic. There was a new ARPG game on the horizon, Path of Exile had just another league, and D4 bad jokes were at its peak. What was once a promising Blizzard game, years in the making with multiple dozens of people, fell short just a couple of weeks after its release. All the joys player experienced during the beta and server slam was analyzed by Blizzard and the decision was made. We cannot have that. Launch of the game was pretty good, with a couple of hiccups in form of plugin and rubber banding issues, game imbalance, systems aren't working, tedious, renowned mechanic no one wanted to do more than once, limited stash space and every resource taken up half your inventory, complicated pathing in dungeons, you need a maze solving algorithm for that one, and most of all, hard nerves. Nerves that slowed the game so hard, but it was all for a good reason. To hide D4's biggest flaw, even present today, the lack of endgame. You know, the portion of the game where players spent most of their time. This portion was was there. After you grinded nightmare dungeons over and over again, maybe visited Helltide or Legion event once or twice, or even grouped up for a loot pinata world boss. You either gave up halfway through this grind, or you made it out to be rewarded with the pinnacle content of the game, Lilith. And then you were done. So after this exhilarating period, many players retreated to their designated ARPG, with hopes that upcoming seasons would remedy the issues of the launch. Unfortunately, that was not on the roadmap for Blizzard. Season 1 was a letdown that added one boss and more materials to clog up your inventory. Season 2 was a big step up because Necros had a dash. Season 3, man, Season 3 was something else. But right when all the hope for the future of ARPGs was extinguished, a new champion stepped into the ring, Last Epoch. The game that was in early access for quite some time was now priming for a hot market, perfectly set up by a failure of an indie game company of 6,000 people. The momentum was building up with announcements of graphics overhaul, new classes, roadmap plans, dev interviews, content creator and existing player base praise. The game already had depth to it, with way deeper skill trees, robust itemization and crafting, and somewhat diverse endgame in form of monoliths, dungeons and other dungeons. And it was all pretty accessible too, the game complexity did not impact the casual player. You did not really need a special guide to play the game, you could very much wing it yourself and end up in a somewhat decent build that could tackle most of the content. And all of this momentum paid off. The game launched into 1.0 with pretty good numbers and pretty bad server issues. It was pretty much unplayable for the first couple of days, unless you wanted to play offline. The honeymoon phase did not last long though, as the player count dropped significantly within a month of its launch, and not many people stuck around. But we'll get to that. Again, an ARPG failed to retain a significant player base. Now, you might be of an argument that such is the nature of RPGs or seasonal games. With new season comes new content, and players are expected to drop off after some time, and you'd be correct on that one. However, the problem is when that drop off happens way too fast, but also when every next update fails to attract same or close to same number of players. And next updates for Last Epoch is where lies the issue. You see, Last Epoch's ability to stick to deadlines or expected 3 month RPG cycles is not really its strongest suit. Players noted this even during early access phase. The updates were sporadic with significant delays and periods of content drop. But this was fine for early access. The game's core was still being built, there's a lot of experimentation and fine tuning, plus by now everyone should know what early access brings. However, once you push your game into an official release, there's a different set of expectations. No longer can you hide your flaws behind its still early access. Now you're in a total different playing field where criticism ramps up, and criticism for Last Epoch is ramping up. Last Epoch's first season, I mean League, I mean Cycle, was alright. It introduced a nemesis system, no, not that nemesis system, this nemesis system. Wait, no, I mean this one. Basically, you can fight the nemesis to get the items, or you can fight it to make the item stronger, and then fight it later to get the items, or you can tell it to go away. But then, after you grind up all your monoliths, you can fight the Harbingers, mini bosses that eventually let you challenge the big boss. Also, the main update to the game is the popular thing in ARPGs nowadays, Evade mechanic. I mean, it's good for the first season, at least they did not give you new material to fill up your inventory after a pack of mobs. At least they are going to expand on this in October, when the next cycle releases. <laughs> So yeah, instead of next cycle, we got the Lizard Uprising event with a fresh start to the game, some balance changes, and loot blizzards. Lots of lots of blizzards. Back in the Sanctuary, D4 devs actually went to work. After Disaster Season 3, they came back with a pretty decent update in Season 4's loot rework and D3 backport. And after playing Season 5 and the new roguelite mode, I gotta say, the game actually feels pretty good. I mean, it's still a 3-day game, but it's damn good 3 days. But now that they are also porting features from Diablo 2, D4 bad memes might be in trouble. 
So it seems last epoch is going to be without a big update for like six months. Considering D4 expansion is coming out in October and PoE 2 in December, this might be the smartest or the dumbest move because no one will remember the game by then. 